This is the Tell Me What To Read podcast powered by Booktopia. I'm Sarah and today I'm here with my fellow category managers Shanu and Ben to talk about the books we are excited for in September 2022. So Ben, as yes. fiction category manager, which books would you like to tell us about? Hi Sarah, uh, I've, I've, I've brought a few uh, <laughs> and I'm going to jump in with our book of the month. It is Carrie Sutter's Back mm-hmm. by Taylor Jenkins Reid. It is probably one of the biggest, most anticipated American books of the year, of the season, um, and it comes from the author of The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and Daisy Jones and the Six. This is a this is a big deal for the fans, um, and I think it'll bring in new readers as well. It totally will. I'm a new reader. I am very excited to read this one, but have not yet partaken. Um, it's really good. I am. I, I did like Daisy Jones. Excellent. And that is the only Taylor Jenkins read that I've read. So this will be number two for me. Well, yeah, I think I think this um, this blends nicely into the Evelyn Hugo, Daisy Jones uh, multiverse. Uh, yeah. It's also a retro one. This one's in the 1990s, kind of coming towards the present. Um, and it is about a, a retired tennis champ who comes out of retirement um, to defend her title as the greatest in the world. Uh, her coach is her father, uh, and the mother has died tragically. There's a lot of interrogation of that family trauma and how that affects kind of pro athletes Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's an interrogation of female ambition particularly in sport uh, which I think is really interesting I think it's actually a stack of stuff to unpack and what I've been told is the most incredibly readable compulsively readable book Um, Mm. even if you know nothing about tennis or you hate tennis it's still awesome I don't think there could be a better uh, endorsement than that. Um, and, <laughs> and Hannah, who uh, is uh, a Daisy Jones um, and the Six Evangelists, read this and it completely blew her away. And she said it took her out of what was a massive reading slump and just totally reinvigorated her love of reading. Oh my god! So if uh, if there's a book to read, I think that's that's the one book of the month. Um, some others uh, in the in the realms of crime, um, I cannot not talk about Richard Osman. Uh, he's Third title is The Bullet That Missed. Um, he is a TV great in the UK. Um, and lots of celebrities write books, right? They get book deals, they put books out. Some of them are good, some of them are all right. <laughs> Richard Osman, fantastic. Uh, this is, yeah, the third in the series of the Thursday Motor Club. The Thursday Motor Club, if you are unaware, uh, he, he was visiting a, a, a retirement home and uh, they had on the whiteboard you know, uh, Tuesday, bridge, <laughs> Wednesday, <laughs> yoga. <laughs> and uh, so he, he dreamed up Thursday, motor club, where a collection of uh, uh, odd sorts who are, who are in of retirement age, obviously, are trying to solve murders. Um, and it just blew up from there. Uh, and yeah, his, his books, they are gorgeous for characterization. They're gorgeous for wry wit. Um, and really good plotting, really intricate, um, Mm -hmm. well done plotting. Uh, It's not, like crime writing is actually really hard to do well and he does it well. Um, Is also a lot of affection for him in terms of his classic Englishness. Um, (laughs) There's a lot to enjoy in Richard Osman. It's it's incredibly giftable as well. I I just, yeah, I can't wait to see where this series goes and see it adapted for telly. I can't wait for it to be adapted either. I'm, I'm sure it will be, it's perfect for it. And I still have to read book two. So I really enjoyed the first one, have not yet read the second one, um, and look forward to that and reading the third. I've already uh, put it on my wish list. My mother-in-law has requested the third book. She has doesn't read a lot of fiction, but she absolutely, she's more of a non-fiction reader, absolutely loved these the first two books of this series. Yeah. One more I'll talk about. Actually, there's a few more. But. <laughs> uh, all right, I'm going to talk about Stephen King. Um, and Stephen King is always a big deal. Stephen King in the pandemic years, you know, the pandemic hit America hard and Stephen King is quite, um, has made quite a name for himself on Twitter as being a, a, um, Trump defamer. <laughs> um, and he, so, so he called out to his fans in the pandemic, he said, what is the book that you want me to write? And of course, everyone wants him to write classic, uh, speculative uh, supernatural fiction and so he has a new book and it is called fairy tale i've seen a copy of it it is a brick 
and it is very supernatural and it is very hard to understand what it's about. I'm going to kind of just surmise the um, blurb because it's it's pretty epic. Um, Charlie Reed looks like a regular high school kid, great at basketball and football, a decent student. He carries a heavy load. His mum was killed in a hit and run car accident when he was 10 and grief drove his dad to drink. Charlie learned how to take care of himself and his dad. When Charlie is 17, he meets a dog named Radar and her aging master, Howard Bowditch. <laughs> a recluse in a big house, top of a hill. This is sounds very king. With a locked shed at the backyard. Sometimes strange sounds emerge from it. Mm -hmm. Charlie starts doing jobs for Mr. Bowditch and loses his heart to Radar. Then when Bowditch dies, he leaves Charlie a cassette tape telling a story no one would believe what Bowditch knows and has kept secret all his long life is that inside the shed is a portal to another world. This eventually becomes a massive battle between the forces of good and the forces of evil, which this kid, Charlie, has to lead. I'm so into this idea. <laughs> I have, I'm, I, I love Stephen King, but I haven't read a new book of his for the, the past few books. Like, this one sounds like one that will definitely appeal. Yeah, me. in the past kind of a decade, he has really made a name for himself as a really good crime writer, yeah. like straight up and down thriller writer. Um, but what the fans love is Supernatural King, and yeah, they've, they've got one in this one. I want to talk about one more fiction book and then shut up. Um, and the, the one kind of real staff passion pick I had to squeeze into this little short list is Marshmallow by Victoria Hannon. <laughs> Um, Victoria Hannon is the author of Kokomo, uh, award-winning book. She's a Victorian, uh, Victoria from Victoria. Um, uh, this is just a sledgehammer to the heart, this book. It uh, is about uh, a group of 30-somethings who are all reeling from the death of a child. Um, and they are just smashed apart by grief. It is a brief book that um, is not told in like a linear format and it follows multiple perspectives and in, in a, an incredible economy of words it can just totally grab the reader by the lapels and just shake them to pieces. Wow. And the tears will just come and come and come. Uh, it's just unparalleled for its power and I think it's got to be the best Australian story I've read this year. That is such a ringing endorsement. I feel like I need to read that book now. Yeah, but um, make sure you've got your uh, yeah, therapy sessions booked for afterwards. Always. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's, these are very helpful things to tell us, Ben, because it's obviously great to know the, the best books to read this month. It's also great to know the ones which are, are okay and not okay on public transport. And this to yeah. me is a, That's not a the public safety transport box. of your own home with a box of tissues. And you might have to wait a little while because tissues are really hard to like find on the shelves at the moment. Or maybe <laughs> maybe old-fashioned handkerchiefs up your sleeve ready to go. That's what you're saying, basically. Yeah. Or just, or just uh, let the tears fall because you're at um, home and it's fine. Uh, what I like to do... Uh, I can film yourself a TikTok then. Uh, <laughs> thick sunglasses and uh, the face mask if you're doing public transport. And then you can just let fly yeah, in disguise. Right. No one's going to know. hoodie as well. I don't know. As long as you're not audibly crying. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if you've seen when I read a really sad book, but yeah, I don't think I'd be safe for public. So that's my weird assortment. That's very varied, isn't it? <laughs> I love it. It's definitely some things that I'll be putting on my uh, TBR there. Shani, would you? Oh, or, or, or Sarah, me. I could... <laughs> Next, we will talk about some kids' books, which I, Sarah, <laughs> the kids' category manager, have chosen to speak about. The first one is kind of like, I mean, if you've got little people in your life that you are buying books for, you probably already know that this book is coming. But in case you don't, it is that time of year, which changes year to year, where we're getting a new Treehouse book. How many levels are they up to? They are up to 156 levels of this of the Treehouse. Are they and even trying? 156, come on. Surely yeah. it must be the 200s by now. It's 156, it goes up by 13 every time, so it's a great oh. way for kids to learn their 13 times eight books. <laughs> you can see, that was not my strong suit. And yeah, I mean, this is definitely gonna be one of the, probably one of the biggest books and one of the most bought books for Christmas coming out 
next month and we expect to be selling it through to the end of the year. This is a no-brainer. This is just like every book is great in the Treehouse series. They're always funny. They're always hilarious. It's amazing to see the stuff that they come up with every time. This one has um, a lost sausage office for times when you lose sausages, a super stinky stuff level, um, and an amazing mind-reading sandwich-making machine, amongst many other things. Um, we will also, at the time of recording this podcast, and hopefully for at least a week or two more, we will have <laughs> some signed copies, which will be available for people to buy. And that's like a little bit, you know, salesy, salesy from me, but I still, I'm excited about oh, this book. I'm special. always, always that excited. Is special. It is, it is. Um, especially, you know, coming out of a couple of pandemic years where we haven't had signed copies for uh, the Treehouse series. So it's, it's exciting. 156 Story Treehouse, book number one I'm talking about. The next one I'm going to talk about, I'm excited about, and I think obviously um, Shanu may be excited about it Oh, too. yes, I'm very yeah. excited. I really love the first one. So I want to talk about the upcoming um, Amari and the Grape Game, which is book two in the Amari series by B.B. Alston, which started with um, Amari and the Knight Brothers. I love this series. It's one of my favourite middle grade magical school series. I feel like, um, well, this in the case, it, it's not less of a school and more of a bureau of supernatural investigation um, in this one. The main character, Amari, is a magician. There's like loads of magic and were dragons and it's a great world. Um, and I'm really, I'm really excited to be returning to it. Plus, uh, I can always be relied on to take things to a superficial level, but it's a beautiful book. <laughs> like it's, it's got a really gorgeous cover and um, lots of sparkles around the, uh, on the title. And yeah, I'm just, if you, if you're looking for something for your kids to read after they've gobbled up Harry Potter and Nevermore, this would be my next recommendation. That's um, a great representation to, to have. It is a diverse author and a diverse main character. And um, it is, it, everything about this is a beautiful, it's beautiful. I was so excited to hear that book two was coming. You never know when these series start, how they will pan out. Like some some of the really popular series, ki series kids authors, you know, have a two year turnaround time or even a three year turnaround time. Um, but this is coming out regularly. And you like the high life. cadence. I do. I don't like to wait too long. <laughs> but anyway, I'm excited. Uh, so that is Amari and the Great Game by B.B. Alston. The next one I want to talk about is another middle grade magical book. Um, you can tell my tastes lean in that direction. I do like magical things. Magical middle grade books are like one of my favorite self-soothing things. So when I need a hit of dopamine, I think that's generally where I turn. I want to read a story about magical adventures. Um, and this is a great one from Cressida Cowell, the super oh, famous, amazing author of How to Train Your Dragon. Um, Cressida Cowell is one of my favorite kids authors. Mm. Like she's just such a magical woman. Um, I do remember once being lucky enough to podcast with her and just riding the high of that for weeks afterwards because she was full of such just beautiful sage wisdom and um, pure love for storytelling and the importance of storytelling. And people should go and check that podcast out after this because I remember how excited you were afterwards. I really like was like, oh my god! I think you messaged I, me directly I was afterwards. So <laughs> starstruck, Cressida Cal. What a I, I love her. Um, so this is a brand new series that she's starting. She had uh, after How to Train Your Dragon. She had The Wizards of Once, which um, that series is now concluded. And this is book one of a brand new series. The first book is called Which Way to Anywhere? And this is like such an interesting premise. It's about a boy who draws maps and he's like got a really wild imagination. He, he draws all these amazing maps. They've got like wor worlds with hundreds of moons and like rivers of fire and like robots and jungles t and just like amazing worlds that he th he thinks he's imagining but um the premise of this book is that he finds out that he is actually accessing like he's drawing maps of alternative worlds that exist um and so you know there's there's 
some robot assassins in this book. It's super magic. It, it has that ineffable, like, just wisdom of all of Cressida Cowell's books. She's just one of those really special authors who can who can tell a story that contains, like, as, as an adult reader, it contains amazing, like, morals and, and values, but they're not luxury and it's not... In, a, in an, it's not in any way that it's gonna that a child will feel like they're being taught, because it's just a beautiful book um, that just has a soul. Mm. Do you know what I'm getting at? I, I feel like I'm so, yeah. floundering a bit, but anyway, I love it. That's the, that's my book three that I wanted to talk about. And now I will move on to one YA recommendation before I wrap up the kids section of this podcast. And I want to talk about Nothing More to Tell by the super duper international best-selling phenomenon and TikTok trending author, Karen M. McManus. So, uh, I hear a lot about this one. Yeah. Karen M. McManus is the author of One of Us is Lying, which was turned into a TV show. And that's probably her, that was her, probably her most famous book. But um, she is coming out with like multiple books a year lately. And every one of them is a super duper book bestseller like we've got so many orders for this already um it doesn't come out until right at the end of this month the 30th of august and it is my favorite type of she writes ya thrillers (laughs) um if it wasn't clear from the title one of us is lying (laughs) it feels like a very thrillery title this one is called nothing more to tell and it is about a it's a cold case one and it involves a crime podcast. And as someone who, again, at the time of recording recording this, I watched the finale to Only Murders in the Building last night. Um, this is a bit of a segue, but Only Murders in the Building is a crime show involving crime podcasts. And I only want to read crime stuff about crime podcasts at the moment. If there's, <laughs> if there's not a crime podcast element... <laughs> Involved in the mystery, I'm less interested. I feel like it's a great... I feel like we're at peak Sarah McDoing right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it just adds a cool L to your, like, to the whole story, right? If It also involves this extra medium. So there's the story going on and then there's the podcast going on and the two sort of feed off each other. This one is about a a student who um, five years before the story begins, uh, a teacher died. Um, at the school and now five years later this the student is got an internship at a true crime show oh it might not even be a podcast it might be a tv show (laughs) but i feel like it's the same thing right yeah so um and off the (laughs) off the bat of that decides to go in and um solve the crime of the teacher's murder and that is nothing more to tell by karen m mcmanus Highly, highly, highly recommend. And that is kids. Shanu, <laughs> do you want to talk to us about some nonfiction and lifestyle books? I would absolutely love to. In fact, um, if I said to the words to you, tell me what I want. Tell me what you want. Tell me what I want. What I really, really want. Spice Girls. Spice Girls. And that is the first <laughs> book I'm going to talk about today. As you can tell, I was a huge Spice Girls fan. <laughs> anyway, but I might not be but thousands and thousands and millions and millions of people are. And for the very first time, there is going to be a biography by one of the Spice Girls. And the Spice Girl that is giving her biography is Melanie C. Can you tell me which Spice Girl Melanie C was? Sporty. Excellent. Well done. (laughs) And um, I can't really tell you much about this book because it's embargoed. And I'm not allowed to see it. I can tell you, though, that she has written it and she's going to give us all the goss about what it was like being a Spice Girl, what it was like in her life growing up before that and what her life has been like after that. What actually has happened and what the secrets she might reveal, I can't tell you what they are. But that's (laughs) even better reason to get it. Even more so, even a better, better reason than just finding out all that information is that, uh, again, at time of recording, we have copies that she has signed. (gasps) Melanie C, Sporty Spice, has signed books for Booktopia. She has held the books in her hands and signed them. Correct. And we have them to sell. So I honestly cannot think of a better gift for someone that um, has ever heard, listened, 
watched anything to do with the Spice Girls, then um, this book, it's going to be big. I think a lot of people are going to be getting that. A lot of people will be excited to get this for Christmas. And it's one of those ones, it's like one for a present, maybe just one for me at the same time. Also uh, very, very big in um, in the nonfiction space this month is um, a lot of books I'm just going to group together really quickly because um, uh, we just have limited time today. And that is books that are going to make you feel better about yourself or make or give you tools to make you feel, um, give you self-love, confidence, two, two lots of confidence actually. You get to be doubly confident with these books I'm talking about now. So the books I'm talking about are The Neuroscience of Self-Love by Alexis Fernandez um, Prixa. I'm talking about How to Be Confident by the best-selling author James Smith. And the C word, and the C word is confidence, just in case you didn't get that, <laughs> oh, good. Uh, by Mel Schilling. Mel Schilling, you may know her from uh, The Psychologist from Maths, Australia's number one rated show. Um, and she has also very kindly signed copies of her book from us. And do you know what else? Do you know who else has signed copies of his book? James Smith. You can have so many signed copies this month because um, all these uh, authors are so brilliant that they have been able to write a book and sign them for us uh, because they want to get their message out. And their message is they're going to help us be more confident, to love ourselves, to um, give us all the tools so that we can do that for ourselves and hopefully help all the others in our lives to also be amazing people. And I think that is awesome. And um, I'm really looking forward to... um, uh, getting to read some of these books myself because again I didn't get copies of them so I can't be as excited about the content of the book as Ben and Sarah can because I didn't get copies oh, of me. them. You oh have I haven't one. yeah <laughs> I haven't read However, them all. <laughs> I I have met James Smith and he is an incredibly uh, persuasive person and he is the most confident person I have ever met. So if he is going to tell me how to be confident he can teach it. He can teach it. Um, I have been, uh, I've been, I'm excited. I'm excited about these books. I think these, they're going to do super well. There's two other books I'm going to very quickly mention as I think what I just think will be like so interesting and have the most interesting stories as well. Um, there are two other biographies. The first one is by um, Adam Kay, um, who uh, wrote the best-selling This Is Going To um, uh, Hurt, which was turned into a um, TV show, uh, which has been really successful with Ben Wishaw. And he's written a follow-up to This Is Going to Hurt called Undoctored, which basically talks about what happens um, in his life after he, um, after he leaves the NHS. And, um, and it it's, uh, goes quite, he says it goes quite deep and it's going to really um, give you a really good look into what it's like being a former doctor and what yeah. has happened in his life since. So I think that'll be super interesting and people will be really into that. Um, then one that I'm really, really excited about is... Um, is a book called Don't Look Away uh, by uh, Daniel uh, Laidley, um, who's co-written this with uh, Conrad uh, Marshall. Um, a lot of people might be familiar with the, um, with the story and a lot of people might not. And I think that this book is gonna be perfect for everyone. It's basically um, the story of, um, of Danielle who um, grew up as, um, uh, as a boy um, in Perth um, then became um, an AFL player, um, was married, was a father of three, but um, that whole time that Danielle was doing this and being in a very masculine role in a very masculine mm. world, um, she knew that she was female. And so this book is basically her story of um, her journey um, and how she has um, come to where she is today. And I think that this will be an, an absolutely um, uh, really like... Um, amazing read for uh just for everyone really you don't have to be a sports lover you just have Mm. to really love a great story and i'm really really excited because danielle um has also been able to sign copies signed um, but i think they're going to be really really limited so i'm hoping that when this podcast goes out we will still have uh copies available so apologies um, if we don't yes (laughs) (laughs) so i pre-ordering is is a really good thing um but yeah so that's that's the um that's the trade books um uh, trade nonfiction uh, books that we're going to talk about, and now I'm going to move on from those books to some more light-hearted books, shall we say? Or maybe not light-hearted. Maybe I don't know. Cookbooks. What would you call cookbooks? Uh, delicious. Beautiful books. <laughs> Beautiful books to pick up and hold. 
rather well, than beautiful books to pick up and read. <laughs> well, well, you I mean, won't read them. I but... think you're going to read the cookbook. I hope you're going to read the cookbook. It's going to be pretty hard to make the make the recipes just by looking at the pictures. Although there are really good pictures in the cookbooks I'm going to talk about. So, the, <laughs> the cookbooks that are coming out in September that I think that everyone that likes cooking needs to have in their in their house. Otolenghi Test Kitchen, extra good things. Excellent. So it's a new series that started um, last year uh, with the first Otolenghi Test Kitchen, and mm -hmm. there's going to be two more. And basically it's everyone's favourite and most wonderful person, um, Yotam Otolenghi, getting his entire team, kitchen team, um, together to um, really distill the essences of cooking and what makes um, cooking uh, great and exciting and distilling them into very simple, easy recipes with great ingredients that um, we can make at home. And I think, who doesn't want to do that? Everyone wants to do that. Very veg forward, um, absolutely, definitely flavor forward. And uh, if you got the first one, you need the second one. And if you haven't got the first one, why didn't you? <laughs> why both? Um, the next book I want to mention is um, one of uh, the most lovely, loveliest authors. And um, again, no signed copies, unfortunately, of Ottolenghi. But we have signed copies from uh, Sylvia Coloco, Coloca and her new book, The Italian Home Cook. I Home-Cook. love her. I have been able to see a sneak peek of this book. And oh my goodness, every single recipe is amazing. And it's perfect because it's coming out in time for summer when the tomatoes are at their best. And you need the tomatoes because this is an Italian cooking book where I think maybe even the dessert recipes. No, probably not. But nearly every recipe has tomatoes <laughs> in it. So um, you want to... You want to get uh, get your tomatoes ready and uh, be excited for the Italian home cook. You too can cook like Sylvia. If you really <laughs> want to do that. Then um, there's also uh, another awesome book which I am so excited about, uh, which also signed copies because this is a thing that's a little bit of... You are just of, racking I'm these racking them up. <laughs> I absolutely am. And this one is uh, by uh, Fiona Weir Walmsley called From Scratch. She lives what, if you look at her Instagram, is an idyllic life. Now, obviously, we know that Instagram is not real life. An and I'm idyllic sure, life on I'm, Instagram? I'm, I'm, sure, sure. <laughs> no, I'm sure she will tell you. And if, actually, if you, unfortunately, if you, you know, there's floods. There's all sorts of things that happen. But she lives on a farm uh, on the south coast. And it is beautiful. And oh. she, makes, um, she makes products. She makes produce. And she sells that. But she's going to teach us, all of us, how to make these things that we might buy from the supermarket, but make them... From Scratch, hence the name of her book, which is From Scratch. <laughs> and um, it is, uh, as Ben is saying, a beautiful book, but it is not one that you will just look at. It is one that you will 100% be wanting to make things from. It is it is amazing. And um, if you want a little piece of that idyllic life, this is the book for you. And I will just sneak in one other book that <laughs> is not a, um, not a recipe book. It is actually a different part of the sort of of the lifestyle kind of area and it is a book called life unhurried which is also based on an instagram um, account basically this is a collection of all the most beautiful places that you any one of us if we have the money can stay <laughs> at <laughs> around australia and can I just tell you that this has made me so happy because I know Airbnb has got its new, you know, special filters on how you can try and look up certain kinds of accommodation, but I do not find the kinds of accommodation very easy to find on Airbnb and I have to go trawling through like weird Google searches to try and find them. Now you don't have to do that. I mean, obviously they've got their, they've got their Instagram, you can go to their Instagram, but they've collated it all together in a book. So you can um, uh, find places. So it's basically a combination of like a travel guide for like the most beautiful um self-contained places they're not hotels these are like these are like homes, you know, homes can, and or you know yeah. or places that have been made for accommodation um and you can use it as a travel guide to book you know book your travel but you can also just use it as a beautiful inspirational book for interiors you can use it as a book to inspire you for gardens you can just use it as a beautiful coffee table book oh wow it is it is amazing and uh we've uh, we're going to have some uh, some uh, extracts from it um, on our uh, website editorial, and um, it is as we were looking through the, um, the the pages to decide what to put in. It was really really hard because every single one was amazing. Oh my god! Um, so yes, I highly recommend this book just for uh, just for. Well, these books are a gift to people on bookseller salaries because. <laughs> 
When you can't afford to take your love to these places, you can give them the visual experience bound in a book while you stay home. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then you don't have to worry about the caveat if you have the money for the holiday because you're not going on the holiday, you're just looking at the beautiful pictures. And you know what? We can all save up for and but the thing is there's price points. There's not all they're not all like they're not all like expensive. Some of these are like little tiny shacks. They're just I bet they're gonna be in high demand now that they've been <laughs> highlighted on this uh, incredible feed. Well, that's why they're going to keep getting more and more and more. Uh, anyway, while, they're the books. While you were going through those, I've, I've done my Which Spice Girl Are You quiz. Oh! On, uh. on Seat. I just wanted to let you know that I'm Ginger Spice and I'm responsible for breaking up the whole group. Oh, Ben. Wow. I wouldn't have picked that. No. 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 Interesting. Although, what one would you have picked Ben as? Um, mm. Posh Spice. That's what I'm thinking, for sure. Posh Spice? <laughs> <laughs> Spice, isn't that Rick, uh, Beckham's? Victoria Beckham. Yeah. Yes, yes, it is. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. That's I know something about the Spice Girls. Yep. Stylish, never smiling. That's been. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite was always Baby. <laughs> Emma Bunting, yeah, she's yeah. she's she's a good one. They're all good. That's the thing. But Melanie C, she's the first one to write the to write their bio. So. I can't wait to uh, wrap up the podcast and take that quiz myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, well. Thank you so much, both of you, for sharing your amazing recommendations. Uh, I feel like I should apologize because I have been <laughs> incredibly tongue-tied today. So thank you for listening to me flail about, verbally speaking. It's um, all the excitement. <laughs> it's the excitement for the books. At least you remembered the name of the Spice Girls song, which I butchered. So <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't think about it couldn't think of the words without singing it and I certainly wasn't going to be singing it on the podcast so that's that's my excuse. Well now I just wish you had sung it on the podcast. <laughs> no Don't one tease else, me. No one me. else no one else wishes that. <laughs> we unfortunately do have to wrap things up we've got quizzes to take but uh, you can check out all of the books we've mentioned in this podcast at your local bookstore or online at Booktopia. If you enjoyed the show drop us a review on Apple Podcasts or a like on Spotify and let us know what you think. We will catch you next Tuesday for our next episode. But until then, thank you for listening and never stop reading.